Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn this $80 mini Lenovo PC into an awesome little emulation machine. This is going to be capable of running Dreamcast, N64, Sega Saturn, GameCube, Wii. Unfortunately, we don't have quite enough power to play a lot of PS2 games, but some will work. And basically anything underneath what I just mentioned. So we have NES, Neo Geo, FBA, this will even do MAME at full speed. This is known as a Lenovo ThinkCenter M93P. We have an i5 4570T, and the version I have only has 4 gigs of RAM, but you can scoop these up anywhere from $60 to $100, and right now they're around $80 bucks with 8 gigs of RAM and no hard drive. Now the operating system that we're going to be using on this is Botocera, and I'm going to install it to an SSD. You can always run this from an external USB drive if you want to, but in this video I'm going to show you how to install it to an internal drive. And in order to easily do that, I'm just going to be using this cheap SATA to USB adapter. This is going to allow me to plug it right into my PC and flash Botocera directly to the SSD. But remember, this can also be done with a USB drive if you don't want to install an SSD. I just picked up this cheap 240 gigabyte drive and it's going to work out perfectly. And this is what all of my games and operating system are going to be running from in this little Lenovo PC. So along with the mini PC, my SSD, and the SATA adapter, I also have a controller. This is the FlyDigi Apex. It uses a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, so it'll connect right up to basically any operating system. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be wireless, so if you do have a wired controller laying around, you can always use that. And the last thing I recommend having is an external drive with your games. Now the only reason we're going to be using this drive is to plug it into USB while we're running Botocera, go into the file management system, and transfer our games from this drive to the internal SSD that we're using in this mini PC. It just makes it a lot easier to get games over there so we don't have to be connected online to do network transfer or anything like that. So now that I have all of my parts ready, I'm going to go ahead and install Botocera to this SSD. I'm going to be doing this from a Windows machine, but this will also work on Mac or Linux. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Botocera installed on this SSD. As you can see, I already have it plugged in with that SATA to USB adapter. First thing we're going to need is Botocera itself. So we'll head over to the website. I'll leave a link for this in the description. We're going to choose download and we want to get the desktop version, the 64 bit version. We'll just choose the direct link. It's going to download for us. While this is downloading, we're going to pick up another application to allow us to flash this to the SSD or USB drive if you choose to go that route. This works with Mac, Windows, or Linux. From the drop down, we have Mac, Linux, and Windows. I'm using a Windows machine, so I'm going to grab the portable version. Once both of these are finished downloading, I'm just going to place them on my desktop for easy access, and we'll get this installed. Alright, so I have Etcher and Botocera downloaded. I'm just going to launch Etcher here. And from within Etcher, we're going to choose Flash from File. That's going to be the Botocera image that we downloaded. Mine's on my desktop. We're going to choose our target device. And this is listed as a J-Micron generic SCSI disk because that's the little adapter I have. This is my 240 gigabyte SSD that I'm going to be using. So we'll make sure we have this chosen. Choose Select. Now it's going to give me a warning because this is a larger drive, but I am 100% positive that this is the SSD I have plugged in over USB. Yes, I'm sure. It's going to start flashing it. And we're finished. So we now have Botocera installed on that SSD, and like I mentioned, this can be done from a USB drive. And then when you're set up on the PC, you can actually install Botocera from within Botocera to this drive. But personally, I think this is just so much easier. You can pick up one of these SATA to USB adapters for pretty cheap on Amazon, and I'll leave a link for them in the description. Now that we have this ready to go on the drive, let's move over to that mini PC. Right, so now I just need to install this SSD here. I'm not going to mount it down yet, um, just to save a little bit of time for this video, but I would recommend mounting it back down. I also have the dongle for that controller I'm going to be using here. I'll just place it in the front, and we're now ready to boot this thing up. Alright, so I'm just going to press this power button here, and since this is the only drive I have in this PC, it's automatically going to boot from that SSD. If you have another drive installed in your PC, and you're worried about it not booting from the Botocera drive, while your system's booting, you can go into the BIOS or the boot menu. On this specific machine here, press F12 while it's booting up, and you can choose that SSD. But if you don't have any other drives installed, it's automatically going to boot from that drive. And we're now running Botocera on this mini PC. 
This controller acts like an Xbox 360 controller, and right out of the box, this is already set up ready to go. But if your controller is not detected, you will need a keyboard to get into the controller settings. And once we have our keyboard plugged in, we can press the space bar. That's going to bring us to the main menu. Press enter. And from here, choose controller settings. Grab your controller, hold the A button, and it'll bring us into the configuration wizard. It walks you through on how to set this up. I mean, everything you need to know is on screen. And as for my hotkey, I always set that as select. So now that we have our controller set up, we can actually start playing some games because there are some freeware games pre-installed with Botocera, but we probably want to add our own, and I'm going to walk you through that. It's actually super easy to do. So remember, I mentioned that I have an external drive here with some games on it. Now, it doesn't have to be an external hard drive. It could be just a USB drive with your games on it. What we're going to do is go ahead and plug it into our Botocera machine. And once we have this all up and running, we're going to get into the file manager. That way we can easily transfer our games or our ROMs from our external drive to the internal drive we have Botocera installed on. And for that, you will need your mouse and keyboard plugged into the machine. So what I'm going to do now is just connect this to my game capture so it's a lot easier to see. Okay, so now that we have that drive plugged in, we're going to press F1 from our keyboard. This is going to bring us into the file manager. Now, in my opinion, this is definitely a really easy way to get your games transferred over. You can always do this over network if you want to, or set up a secondary drive. But I personally like to have everything consolidated, so this is the method that I use. From the left-hand side, we're under Share. Here's our BIOS folder. All of our BIOSes are going to go in here. Here's our ROMs folder. If we go in here, you can see that we have these systems already listed. Now, let's say we want to transfer a couple GameCube games over. We're going to find GameCube. There's nothing in here. I'm going to take some GameCube games from that drive I have plugged in, which is called My Book. In here, I have another folder called Games, and this is going to be different depending on how you have your set up. But this is my external drive. Got some Dreamcast, GameCube, NES, PSP, and PlayStation 1. I'm going to go into my GameCube folder, and I have two games here. I'm going to copy these. I'm going to head back to my Share folder. ROMs, GameCube, because those are the games we want, and I'm going to paste them right in here. And now these are transferring from my external drive to the internal SSD that we have Botocera installed on. So now I have two GameCube games here. I'm going to go back to my book, my games folder where I have my games located. Got some Dreamcast in here. I'm going to take my Dreamcast games, go back to share, ROMs, I'm going to find Dreamcast, and I'm going to paste them in here. It's really that simple. I'm going to go one more here. We'll go back to my book, Games. I'll do PSP. Take my PSP games. Share. ROMs. I'll find PSP from here. And I'll just paste them in. I'll let this finish up. Now that this is finished up, I'm going to go to File, Close Window. It's going to bring us right back into Emulation Station. And if we scroll through here, you might notice that those games we just added aren't here yet. That's because we need to do a restart. Or we can rescan the games. Personally, I just press Start on my controller, Quit, Restart System. now you can see we have our Dreamcast, PSP. I also added some GameCube games here. Now if we go into each one of these folders, you might notice we don't have any kind of artwork. And in order to scrape this correctly, you will need to be online for this to work. You can either use Wi-Fi or Ethernet. If you want to connect to Wi-Fi, press Start on your controller. Network Settings. Enable Wi-Fi as long as you have Wi-Fi installed on your PC. You're going to put in your SSID and your Wi-Fi password. Personally, I like connecting over Ethernet because all I got to do is plug a cable in. All right, so I've plugged in my Ethernet. You can see that I'm connected to the Internet. And now we want to add some box art because if I go into Dreamcast, we don't have anything listed. Press start on your controller. Scrape. 
From here, I use the games DB and kind of leave everything default. I go to scrape now. All my systems are selected, but for this video, I'm going to deselect everything except for Dreamcast. Just takes a little while. We now have one system selected. We'll choose start. Up in the top right hand corner, it's going to give us a status on scraping. It says we're finished up now. If we go in here, we still don't have any box art, but what we need to do is press start, game settings, update games list. And there we have it. And it actually missed Marvel vs. Capcom 2. It always misses this one because I have it named weird. But as you can see, it's got everything else for me. And we got a little bit of box art just to make it look a little better. But that's about it. I mean, you're now set to play with this little mini PC. I'm actually just going to show you some games running in PSP. We'll do some uh, Sega Saturn and some GameCube just to show you how this thing performs. So real quick, before we get into gameplay, since I'm using this little machine here, in order to get sound out of HDMI, I need to press start on my controller. I'm going to go to system settings. From here, I'm going to go to audio output, and I'm going to set this to HDMI zero. That's going to enable audio out over HDMI with this specific machine. Now, if you're on a different machine, you may need to choose a different one, but I know for a fact that HDMI zero works on this tiny Lenovo. So first up, we have some PSP with Chains of Olympus. I'm at 2x resolution here. Works great. The easier to run games can go to 3 and 4x, but when it comes to the harder ones to run, like Midnight Club, Chains of Olympus, and Ghost of Sparta, you will need to take it down to 2, but we're using that OpenGL back end, and it works amazingly. Another one that this little machine runs really well is Sega Saturn. This is using the Yoba Sanchiro core inside of Retro Arch, and even Sega Rally runs at full speed. This little thing also handles the harder to run GameCube games like Automotalista here. As you can see, we're running at full speed, and it'll even do Wii games. So yeah, I personally think that these tiny PCs make great little emulation setups if you want to do a standalone setup like this or add it to an arcade cabinet. Now there's a few more things that I wanted to go over before we get out of here, and it really just has to do with customization. This is the stock theme that we've been looking at the whole time, but we can install different ones by pressing start on our controller. And in order for this to work, you will need to be online. From here, scroll down to updates and downloads, themes and we can choose themes from here. There's a few awesome ones that I personally really like, like this one here, ES Theme Forever. We'll install it. And I'll also install one of my favorites, Omega Drive. So we'll give this a second to download. Both of them are successfully installed. We'll go back to the menu, UI settings, and from here, we can choose which one we want. I'm going to go with ES Themes Forever first. We'll just back up. It's going to swap it out for us. And this one's really more made for videos because right in the middle there, we have some videos. And for these, I haven't downloaded any. But uh, everything that's already pre-installed should have a video. Next one we'll take a look at is one of my favorites. Omega Drive. So from here, we have our consoles, and if we go into each one, see it brings up our box art, or if you have videos, it'll bring up your videos. And I really do like the way this looks. We can also go over to handhelds. So overall, it's definitely a nice little setup. This was just kind of a quick start guide to get you up and running. Showed you how to add some games pretty easily and get this all installed on an SSD. If you run into issues, I would suggest heading over to the Botocera website. They do have a forum, and they got some really awesome people over there to help you out. If you're interested in picking up a mini PC like this, I will leave a few links in the description. Your best bet is to hit up eBay and see what you can find. As of making this video, I saw several of them for sale, anywhere from $70 to $100. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.